Hi, I'm Dries Costa, Managing Director at Chat Automation, where we fuse conversational AI with robotic process automation for the benefit of the recruitment sector. Aside from my questionable dad jokes and poor taste in sunglasses, I'm a car fanatic who's been known to go on the odd trip here and there. Let's get on with the show! <laughs> It's a gorgeous Thursday morning, the birds are singing, and the beauty of running your own business is every now and then you can give yourself some time off. To unwind, I love going for a drive in my car, but today I feel like I do need a partner in crime. So, the person I have in mind for this is a recruitment industry legend, Arsenal fan, family man, and above all, a real hustler. Anyway, I don't know whether or not he'll be awake at this time in the morning or given all the jobs he's currently doing, whether he'll even have time for us, but let's put a call into Gary Eldon, OB, and see if he's around for a chat, a drive, and a coffee. Hello? Hi, is that Gary? Yeah, who's this? I'll see you now. <laughs> Get out of here. Why are you calling me at this time in the morning? Sorry, did I wake you up? No, I was, I'm all right. I was, on, I was on a call anyway, so it's fine. Uh, it's fine. It's heading to be busy. Yeah. Oh, go yeah. on then. I'll buy it. Listen, I really want to go for a drive, and uh, I want to see whether you're, you're about to uh, to go and grab a drink. I know I know you don't drink tea or coffee, but um, are you up for a little drive, a little chat, and uh, a beverage? Yeah, why not? I've got got nothing, ever, nothing better to do. <laughs> very good. <laughs> Happy to have a chat with you at all times. No Excellent. problem. No problem. Excellent. Well, I will see you very shortly. See you soon, mate. Right, here he comes. Good Hello, morning. mate. You all right? How you doing? Nice to see you again. Very you well, too. you? What are you doing in my car? <laughs> <laughs> Someone gave me the key. Oh, or, right. or rather, the, can we show this? The little car. Yeah, that's the key. Look at that. Beautiful. Yeah, you have to put that on there for it to work. Lovely. Brilliant. Right, ready? let's go for a coffee, shall ready we? Ready to go? Yeah. Ready to go. I don't drink tea or coffee, but we can uh, go, for, right. go for a hot chocolate. Okay, well, nice hot we'll, chocolate. We'll have something that you enjoy for sure. All oh, right, just felt that tightening. Yeah, the seatbelt. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. And the screen is a bit complicated. Right. Um, but the Tesla one's a lot better than this. I think they've overcomplicated it. But, this one? Yeah. But the feel, as you can see. Chinese tech for you, but built in the UK still, yeah. right? Feels amazing, right? Oh, yeah, wow. The acceleration as well. Yeah. Obviously, we are, for the viewers, we are going at the speed limit. <laughs> I had this the other day. I uh, was going to the cinema with a friend, and uh, Copper went, it kind of um, came up behind us at the lights. And uh, I pulled away, and my mate was like, you know, take it easy. <laughs> there's, it's right a, there. there's a policeman behind. I'm like, right, but there's nothing wrong with acceleration as long as it's safe. And as long as you stick within the speed limit, right? Oh, and there's a lot of country roads around here, as you can imagine. It's a far cry from Camberwell. So, I mean, let's find a spot here and uh, and pull over and have a little chat about the car first and foremost, shall we? Yeah. Please. Anywhere. Anywhere that works. Oh, that looks like a beautiful place. Here we go. So, the Lotus... Electra? Electra. Is that how you pronounce it? Electra, Electra. yeah. Okay. Yep. So when did, when did you get this beauty then? I had it, I got it just before Christmas. Okay. I put my name on the waiting list, maybe January, no, February, March. Right. I wasn't expecting it to get it until the new year and um, got a call saying it's available. So yeah, that's very quick. Yeah. Did you, did you scope it out yourself or was the spec ready to go? Well, yeah, it's a be yeah you can scope it out. Um, so you get three levels. You've got the sort of supercharged, you've got the basic, and I've got the middle, the middle yeah. range. So you can get slightly bigger wheels. Right. You can have a slightly different colours, green or black, you pay extra. But I, I like the off the off white, grey colour. I thought okay. it was unusual. Yeah, it looks, it looks stunning. And I, I just bought it on the actually on style. I actually yeah. so I had a Tesla um, Tesla X before. Right. And I remember buying that based on because of the, the way the doors opened. Um, that's How mad, did they open, it? sorry? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, let's have a look. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those, yeah. It's like the reverse pterodactyl. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, and when I got the Tesla, I thought, oh, it's amazing. That was my first ever electric car. Yeah. And then the, the Tesla was about four or five years old. Uh, we wanted to change. And I was looking up electric cars. I wanted an electric because my wife's got a petrol car. Right. And I wanted an electric. And I saw this and it was like, wow, this is amazing. I love the whole style. Yeah, the, it, it's borrowed it, a lot of looks from the yeah. Lamborghini Urus on the face it of it, It is, right? it does, it does. Said that. And, it, and they say all this, the styling is not just for look, it's aerodynamic and yep. they've looked at everything. Yep. Um, so, yeah, and it, they're proper vents, right? Yeah, yeah. And, it's got a sp and the thing about it as well, my wife doesn't like the car because it's got a sports feel. It's not okay. comfortable. Okay. So it feels like you're still driving a sports car, yeah. but you're in, a, in an SUV. And um, so it ticks all the boxes. So well, yeah. I, as you know, I'm a big Lotus fan. 
and uh, from everything I've heard, they have somehow, despite this, well, it's their second electric car, isn't it? Because there's the Avaya supercar, which is like a million pound plus. But this is like the first, I guess, every man's, if we can, we, we can call it yeah. that, electric yeah. car. Yeah. But somehow they've managed to keep the kind of Lotus handling and the feel uh, in this vehicle. A few moments later. All right, so off for a coffee and a not so coffee. Hot chocolate. So Gary, listen, Really appreciate your time first and foremost, right? No worries. It's, it's wonderful uh, to, uh, to to spend some time in your lovely vehicle. I do want to talk, talk cars. I want to talk recruitment. Um, but first and foremost, I want to talk a bit about, about you. But before we go into all of that, I've got some quick fire questions, if you don't mind. No worries. Um, so just short answers. I'm sure we'll go into this in, in more detail. But what, what was your first job in recruitment? My first job in recruitment was a trainee recruitment consultant right. for a company back in 1990 called Computer Futures. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Your favourite job in recruitment? When I most yeah, my favourite job was when I was run, when I started my own business, Huxley. So when I was the yeah. managing director of Huxley, that was my that was my favourite job. Yeah. Okay. First yeah. car. My first car. Most most people won't even know what this car is. Was an orange Hillman Imp. Wow, you had an Imp. I had it. My dad was giving it to him. Yeah. For free. For a reason. <laughs> but why did they give it away? I, I don't know why. It was a it was a rear engine car. It, I think it was about 800 cc. Oh, but I have to power. say, it was my most reliable car I've ever had in my life. Really. And um, I was brought up in Campbell, so most of my friends yeah. were in Brixton and Campbell. Yeah. We yeah. used to go out, and they were so ashamed to be in the car. <laughs> we used to duck or hide <laughs> and park the car miles away from like um, any parties that we went to. Well, I'm, I, I know it's not the most green of places, South London, but I'm imagining you had like leaves in the boot of the car just because if it was bright orange, oh, you must have camouflaged it whenever you parked no, it up. Listen, I couldn't complain. I was the first out of my friends to have a car. Nice, I yeah, didn't yeah. have to pay for it. With that and beggars yeah. can't be choosers, right? So. Yeah. Um, it very good. And it changed my whole life. It took me to all parts of London that I would never have necessarily have gone before. So, yeah. 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 Good. Favourite car? Oh. That oh. you've owned or yeah. had or still owned? Oh, that's a, that is a tough one. That's a tough one. Um, my favourite car. I'd have to say it's either my Renault 5 GT Turbo. Yeah. Which is right? which my first company car. Okay. Um, or... When I started Huxley, I had a choice of getting my company car. I had a, a M3 purple oh. BMW convertible. So you didn't learn after the bright orange one. You thought <laughs> I have to get a purple one. <laughs> mate, I used to wear, mate, I used to wear purple Oswald Oswald Boateng suits, of mate. You so, did. so purple was my thing. <laughs> and that was just on a Tuesday morning into the office. And I right? still like a purple. If you look at Higher Genius and all its logos, yes. it's a lot of purple. Yeah. So purple was my thing. And it's more, my thing. More on Higher Genius later. Yeah. Right? So that. Yeah. What are we talking suede or? What what suede? What purple suede outfits or? No, no, no. Are you sure? No, just a purple suit. I can and, just and, per you. and purple linings. I used to like a purple lining in my suit. Oh, so got, yeah, I used I actually I had a Joker type suit. Everyone used to take the pee out of me <laughs> in my purple suit. And right. I look back, it was like yeah, it was a bit too much. But what, what can you do? What can you do? <laughs> I've, I've actually got images of you now in those you know those suede purple oh, mate, slippers. I, no, I having, did because you like your whiskey, right? So having a little bit of whiskey. No, kicking no, back at no. home with the newspaper and a. <laughs> I, I did have woven shoes as well, and someone used to call me because um, woven shoes are big in Nigeria, so they used to call me Nigerian Prince. So right, yeah, right. <laughs> we'll, we'll, anyway. we'll, we'll come back to heritage because yeah. we know it's not Nigeria. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, let, let's talk about an embarrassing fact uh, then, and I'm, I'm imagining this might involve a car. Yeah, look, I had um, so I had a run at five GT Turbo, and um, when I when I started my job at Computer Futures yeah. after a couple of years. I had this desire to start my own business and I wanted to start a Caribbean takeaway. Yeah. I wanted to be like the Nando's equivalent for Caribbean food. Right. So I opened up a Caribbean takeaway in Lewisham called LBW and I used to finish at 12 o'clock. Cricket. Cricket yeah. reference then? Cricket reference. My dad was big into cricket. And um, oh, sorry, dad was from? It's Jamaica. Right. Jamaica. So we, um, I used to drop her home yeah. at 12 o'clock and she lived in Woolwich. Yeah. And I would be, I would get stopped by the police two to three times a week right for about the first two or three months and then after a while they recognized the car but it was it was painful painful 
it's stolen yeah. because colour of your skin, the car you're driving. The car I'm driving, bit of, but late at night, a bit of both, right? Yeah. Or was uh, it just your reputation? Or maybe it's my, maybe it's my bad driving. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's a combination of all ones, I think okay. I'd imagine. But, but you did have, you were a real hustler, right? Always have been, always will be probably. Yeah, yeah. Look, that didn't work out, right? So, um, but I've always had that sort of desire to do something and luckily, the cult, the environment I was in at S3, yeah. they encourage what they, I say it's entrepreneurs, yes. not entrepreneurs. Yeah, you're not go, the first S3 person yeah. to use that. Term. Run your own, run your own business. So yeah. um, I love the fact that I had the, st the stability of S3, but I had the freedom to do yeah. more or less within a framework what I wanted. You know. And what was it about the the Renault Five you liked so much? Oh gosh, so so my previous job in a state agency, I had a Rover. Right. Um, but when you get to this Renault 5, when that turbo kicks in, yeah. oh, it's beautiful, right? The acceleration right. was like out of this world. And um, it was a solid car. It's well, you know, it's the speed, the feel. Oh, it was, a, it was, yeah, it was a lovely car, a lovely car. Uh, I was 16 when I got my first job and my friends were, on the other side of the law in a lot of cases yeah. and they were earning more money maybe in a month than I was earning in a year right yeah. but I always felt that I wanted to my dad wanted me to learn a trade right and, and, I, and I can't even put a light bulb in right but uh, right. I wanted to I wanted to work in a bank to be honest yeah and I couldn't get a job in a bank so I ended up getting a job as an insurance broker yeah and that sort of that changed my whole perspective on life you meet different people from different walks of life and um, and yeah, I used to wear pinstripe suits, um, polka dot ties, yeah. the whole double cuff shirts, just, you know, Anything to feel- purple? Ooh, well, no, no. <laughs> you I, weren't I, brave I, enough I, then. I, I weren't brave you enough You were working then. hard to try and, on a serious note, you were working hard to try and fit in, right? Exactly, you try and fit in, and I'm a bit of a chameleon, right? So right. you've got, there's a divide, there's a class system in this shorts broken. Yeah. You just try and fit in. I suppose I'm someone of mixed heritage, right? So. Yeah. I also learned that you know I've got black friends and white friends, right? Yeah. And it's you know so I, throughout my life it's always about how how you adapt and 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 and, and feel part of something, right? Yeah. So you do everything in your powers to 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 try, I suppose, to make life easy for yourself. So obviously the passion for diversity, and I know this isn't just about male, female, black, white, and, yeah. and whatever else, but you do have that passion uh, for diversity. You got an OBE for services to exactly that, yeah. right? So yeah. talk, talk us, I know the OBE obviously is is, is is a great thing to have, but hasn't changed you as a human being. Um, but talk talk to us a little bit about, about that, if you don't mind. Um, yeah, look, um, sometimes, you know, I, look, I'm, not a, I'm not a royalist really, to be honest, right. and I have to question whether or not to accept it. But right. I remember speaking to the chairman of the char charity, Ken, or Sir Ken as he's known, and he said, look, just think about how you can inspire other people. Yeah. Forget yeah. about the royal family. Think about if you can if you're in a role where you want to inspire and motivate and be a role model, yeah. then that's why you do it. Yeah. So so that's why. And look, and I the charity I work I work as a trustee for the Alito Foundation. They do a lot of work around um, kids from what's considered disadvantaged backgrounds, but I'd say it's an my background was an advantage, right? I don't like the word disadvantage. Yeah, because um, well, it shapes you in a different way, yeah, which then yeah. obviously means you react a certain way in, in your life exactly, as you get older, right? Exactly, so they, they focus on kids that are seen as the best of the best. Okay. And the reason for that is that you can't you can't do everything. So what we try and find is if someone's really entrepreneurial, yeah. very academic, yeah. you know, they want to go to university, yeah. if they want to go to Oxbridge or something like that, yeah, yeah. we've got enough enough people who are alumni from the charity that they can and the idea is to develop and train leaders of tomorrow so yeah. what we don't want is like okay great you've got a great job we want yeah. people to who can potentially be yeah. the prime minister or a ceo or or a judge not just a lawyer right a managing partner we want to the leaders and they've got these kids are amazing right they you know we train them to develop them on how to do public speaking presentations yeah. Yeah. Um, they run they run they work for charities on the side they run their own charities their own businesses they put stuff back in the community they amazing. help homeless so these kids some of them have done more at 23 than I did yeah. at 35 yeah, right? yeah, and yeah. so we need these people we don't because if you look at the, the government set up now 
class, not just colour, but class is the biggest issue we've got in this country. So these kids, because of their background, hopefully when they make it to the top, we're going to just break down that class barrier that we see where the elite rule the mass and say, right, let's make sure it's a reflection of society and people can relate. Okay, and right, I, I've told you this before, right? This will make you laugh, but um, as you know, I've got three kids. My youngest, Penny, she's, she's only eight, but uh, <laughs> when she knew I was coming to see you, there was a request. Then the request was, please can you get his autograph? Because if he's got an ODE, <laughs> then he's met someone from the oh, royal family. So, gosh. so we'll sort that out later. It's not safe that, to do it right now. <laughs> I've, I've never been asked for an autograph before. <laughs> but listen, how can you say no to an eight-year-old girl? I, I know, I can't. I'll give, I'll give her a picture as well. <laughs> yeah, funny, funny. Um, so which... Which of the, I know you're not a royalist, but um, who, who actually gave you your OB on uh, the way? It was William, actually. Oh, uh, was it? Okay. It was William, yeah. And um, he, yeah, it was, yeah, I made him blush um, over a comment that I made, which I can't repeat, but uh, <laughs> my wife said to me, my, when, I, when, I, when I finished, she goes, my wife said to me, what did you say to him? I go, why? He goes, he really, he just blushed. And I said, oh, wow. I, I said that, so yeah. But um, did, he, did he go quiet as well or did he no, give he as tried, good he as tried, he got? He tried to, he okay. tried to come back, but it was, it was it's fun. Hard, it's hard, right, really, in his position as well. It's hard, God, it's hard, it's hard, yeah. You naughty little boy. I know, I can't <laughs> help it, I can't help it. It's in my nature, as just, the scorpion just, said to the frog, right? The, the little, a little bit of mischief in there. <laughs> yeah, can't help it. All right, cheers. <laughs> cheers. Makes a change from back in the day having a beer together. It does, it does. Civilised, or is it called old age? I don't know. I want to go a little bit deeper then in, into your career path. So we talked about the pinstripe suits. Uh, that was in insurance. Yeah, I and left then four years I was in insurance. And I, re I realised it wasn't a meritocratic environment. Yeah. It was who you knew. Right. So my boss was a friend's father, was a partner at a underwriters. He came in as my boss, and I was thinking, I've been here four years, yeah. I'm working really hard. Yeah. This is, again, this is the class system here. Right. I, wasn't gonna, I was only going to get so far. And, and that, uh, that was the reason behind leaving, was it? Yeah, and I'll tell you what, and this is linked to a car, right? So the guy, I was actually looking to buy a property. Okay. And this young guy, looks like me, turns up in a Golf GTI convertible, white. Right. And he worked for a state agency back then called Halifax. Yeah. That it became Jacks or Jacksons. That became Halifax. Okay. And he had this lovely car, and I was thinking. So he's driving around. I said, "Tell me about what you do. You're an estate agent. Yeah. You get paid commission. Yeah. You have your sell houses. Yeah. And you get a company car like this." He went. I went. That's it. Got the yellow. Sorry. Got the yellow pages out. <laughs> Got to a company, a company called Bushels. Okay. The part he owned, he also had an ownership of a Winkworth fr franchise. Yeah. And I started a, as an estate agent at but, Winkworth. But hang on a minute, was it the career progression or was it the car? It was the right? car. <laughs> and the fact that you get paid commission. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I never ever got a com I, I had a Rover, not yeah. a Golf GTI. But yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. But then you left there to go into recruitment, took a significant pay cut, right? Yeah, I, I was, I was in a 30 grand a year company car manager. Yeah. And um, again, another car was imp impacted my change. I okay. went to a wedding. Yeah. I turned up at this wedding and these guys all had these BMWs, Mercedes. Right. I was like, wow, what do you guys do? Yeah. We do IT recruitment. I said, what's IT? Oh, really? I hadn't even, no, wow. didn't even know what IT was. Wow, okay. This was 19, 1990. Yeah. And they said, oh, we, we, we're salespeople. I'm like, okay. You're like, my, I'm a salesperson, you're a salesperson. And my, P, and my, P, my PA, I had a PA at, at, as a, the estate agent, her boyfriend worked for Computer Futures. Ah, okay. On the phone, got the yellow pages out as well, yeah. rang up all these other companies. Yeah. Have you got any jobs? And I went for an interview and they were like, I had about six interviews. And I don't think I'd, I'd, well, I had to keep calling up, kept calling up. And I think they just, for persistence, yeah. they took me on. And could, just, just so you'd leave them alone, basically. It was, it was, <laughs> okay. it was. I think it was Russell actually felt sorry for me. 
because I was telling him stories how I used to run um, house parties and we knew the same people. Uh, okay. So he must have thought, oh, he's, all right, I can relate to him. Yeah. Uh, so Russell, but, I think. Uh, see, I think that's so important in business. If you know the background to someone, that kind of quickly establishing a common ground in the relationship really sets you up for a, you know something positive going forward. And yeah, of course. This is what I've always said to my teams is... You, it's going to sound wrong, right? But I don't, actually don't mind if they do a bit of Facebook stalking or whatever else. Just find something, and then you just so happen when to you drop it into a conversation. You drop right? it in in the intro to kind of go, oh, you know, we're both Arsenal fans. Did you see the Arsenal play? So that's the little thing I used to say to people, right. right? How do you find out that bit more? That's why getting to know someone, yeah. you meet them face to face, they'll open up more, yeah. and you have that little bit, little bit of nugget that you know about yeah. them, that when you call them again or speak to them again, yeah. oh, how was the weekend? Yeah. How's little Johnny? Or yeah. what did you think of the rugby? Or yeah. So you joined Computer Futures. Yeah, trainee. Yeah. Um, mentor in the business? Did he have a mentor in the business? Russell, when I joined, they had a, a basic computer system. Yeah. I couldn't get my head around it. So Russell introduced a card system for this me. This is your first CRM, isn't it? I've yeah. heard about your candidate card. So I had a card system. In, in enters uh, Gary Oldham into the world of CRM. Exactly. CRM. Exactly. So tell us a little bit about. So the cards. So, so I couldn't. I couldn't use a system, right? It was new to me. And he said, "Look, I'll give you a card system. You put the name of the person down. You put the name. You put their skills down the middle. Yeah. You put their education and salary. Yeah. So when a job comes in, you go through your card. Just yeah. Flip it. Yeah. Flip it. Get the CV." Fax it, right? No, there was no emails back then. Yeah. Um, um, put it in an envelope, post it, and you send it out. And that's my way of, rather than searching on the on the system. Yeah. So Russell was the first person to. He trained me, um, gave me the process. Yeah. But my the inspiration was 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 Bill because he was so entrepreneurial, and then what Simon did, who was the co-founder, he gave. He was a disciplinarian. Right. So if you turn up late, yeah. you're in trouble. Right. Or if you don't have your, you have your ties not done. Yeah. Or back then, if you had a can't have a bit, you're not shaven. Really? Okay. So when I ran, when I started Huxley, I had the bit of Simon, a bit of Russell, and a bit of Bill. Right. Yeah. So I and and your upbringing. Exactly. All that. So that makes you. That's how you improve, right? Yeah. So yeah. they all had a critical, and my and the person I was chasing was a guy called Sonil. Yeah. He was the first, excuse me, he was the first one to set up um, a, a new brand out of Computer Futures. He started yeah. Progressive. Yeah. So, and he was inspirational because he showed me what can be done as well. Yeah. So you have all these sort of people that go, ah. Oh. And that's why it was a great environment yeah, because yeah. you had, it's, this can be done here. Yeah. So it is a meritocratic environment. He was a top biller. Yeah. Um, you got the support. Yeah. And you can go out afterwards and talk about music or sports or, yeah. or whatever, right? And they're all champagne socialists as well. Um, and it was, yeah, it was good. It was great. So, yeah, a lot of people that impacted my life. The biggest person, though, the biggest impact was Bill. Okay. Uh, he, he was the one who believed in me and gave me the opportunity to start. Or when he felt there was an injustice in certain things, mm -hmm. he would personally, out of his own pocket, make it right. Wow. So, it, you know, he, he would really always go the extra mile yeah. and really cared. And, and you can see why he was a successful person because he liked, he, he believed in people. Yeah. So I think he was, he's the, he had the biggest impact in my career by, by, by country mile. So, I mean, S3 are very good, very good at this in terms of giving people structure, right? But you, you had some structure, you had a mentor that helped you on the way. You worked hard, you were billing well. This is before you started Huxley Associates. Then there was a dip because... Yeah, um, I was doing really well. And then I decided I wanted to run a takeaway. So I used to start LBW, work, start LBW. So I start at nine. Yeah. And I used to finish, so I used to do nine to about seven or eight. Yeah. But because I had my takeaway, I do nine, finish at six, yep. go to the takeaway, work from six to midnight. Six days a week I'd work in a takeaway. So I was doing two jobs. Wow. Now, if you want to be successful in this business, you've got to work harder yep. and smarter. Yeah. Well, I'm not doing the hours. If you don't put the hours in, yep. my... I'm down 20, 30%. You got That's out. the difference between being a top biller yeah. or being average. Yeah. So, um, so Bill and Simon, Simon pulled me and he goes, you got something to tell me? I went, no. Um, you sure you got something? I, I actually told someone who was actually uh, dating Simon and I didn't know, didn't know and that. she told him. And um, now he's wife, so it's all right. But yeah. um, I got found out and I thought, that's it. If, that, if I'm thinking back now, I would have sacked should have sacked me. 
if you were in his shoes, you would have sacked yourself. Yeah, they didn't sack me. So they've obviously seen enough by this point to kind of go, yeah, hang on a minute. And, and this was just a grown-up conversation to go, Some, something's got to no, give. No, just, they didn't tell me to pack it in. They said, as long as you hit your targets, fine. And then I had a light bulb moment. I went, takeaway. And the, the challenge of running a takeaway, dinner with the general public. What, and what was the motivation for opening it, though? Like, I wanted to be... Because you were doing well. Yeah, but I wanted, to, I wanted to do the Nando's of the Caribbean. I still think Caribbean takeaways are run so badly, even now, to this day... Yeah. Why isn't there an equivalent to Nando's for Caribbeans? And if there okay. is, they're terrible. But there's a difference between setting that up and maybe helping someone to run it versus Gary wants to do it because... I don't know. I always wanted to do... I maybe I had to get it... I had to get it, get it off my chest. I had to try it. Right? It's a niche, and it's a niche, right? After a year, I did the maths and went, hold on, I could be earning some silly money in an industry like IT, yeah. which is growing no end. Yeah. Or deal with the general public and deal with all that shit. And then, obviously, you went on to do well. S3 have done fantastically well with the entrepreneur model we described before. Yeah, so look, they kind of helped you seed funded. Yeah, look, I, I, I became a team leader. And this is the beauty of the company when it says America. There were people that had more experience than me. Yeah. But because I was billing well. Yeah. Because I would contribute. Yeah. They promoted me to a manager, and it's like, well, that's, that's a tough decision to make. Yeah. You know, there's people that have been here before me and maybe more senior than me. And then, it, was, it was the focus that got you back on track, was it? Yes. You stitched the restaurant and then Our, Health that for was Leather. It. All, Health for Leather, all in. I'm all in, I'm all in, I'm all in. I want my own business, I want my own business. So after so was maybe five, three years of post that, then Neg said, right, they said, right, you've got, you've got a chance to have your own business. And, and, I, and I started Huxley in 95. How did you feel in that moment? When right. that best feeling ever, yeah, best feeling ever. Because you already knew they believed in you. Yeah, but I, you know when you they say yeah, it's, it, you got the opportunity because Sonia had done it. Yeah, I knew it was a possibility. You went to them, they came to you. Bit of both. Okay. This is how chippy I was, right? And this is Bill would tell this though. There was a guy that was offered an opportunity to run the Bristol office, right? But he didn't ask me, and I thought I was next in line. And remember the same goes, Gary. If we offered it to you, would you have taken it? No. <laughs> so what's your problem? But you didn't ask me. That's how I was. Yeah, right? It was always yeah. like... Because you're still trying to build trust with people, right? Because I, I, I just want to take a moment, though, because their, their management style of you sounds to me like was exactly what you needed. You, like, yes, they believed in you. Yes, they built up your confidence. But there was a firm Put you in hand, your place. Yeah. yeah, firm hand every now and then to kind of go, hang on a minute... Which, which I think is lacking a lot in the work environment nowadays. People are afraid to have the difficult conversations to kind of go, well, hang on, no. But I think it's really important because people know exactly where they're at. It gives them a developmental opportunity as well to kind of go reflect on that. Go, actually, no, they're right. And what am I going to do about it? Exactly. Exactly. And you know what? It wasn't until maybe... I still was always pushing and pushing and pushing, but... It's in my nature, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and someone like Bill was one, one of the few people that knew how to manage me, right? Um, and I suppose both, all, Bill and Simon would just always compliment each other. Yeah. Um, but Bill was always the person I'd go to. So you're right, I think because he was a nice person and because I trusted him and because he's never, hadn't always delivered on his promises, mm. After time, you don't challenge, you don't question people as much, right? Yeah. Only if you don't, if you don't agree with it because yeah. you don't think it's the right yeah. decision. But but you didn't have a problem speaking up if you did no, think that, right? No, no. So that's why, yeah, chippy, chippy. And and <laughs> Huxley Associates, fast forwarding a little bit, came immensely successful. You're very competitive against the other brands. Then the opportunity arises to become chief strategy officer. Big, big mindset change from competing against the other brands to now having to work together for the greater good of the listed company, which is that was, three, which was tough. And then the CEO job comes up. Yeah. So I was in America at the time. And you, you did or did not want this role? Because reluctant like, CEO, I think, is a term yeah, look, used before. When, when the chairman talked to me about it, I said, look, I don't even know. Look, knowing what Russell does, Russell goes around to see a lot of investors, wine and dining. I was right. like, that's not me. And so you don't have to do it in the same way. So I did it because I was in America. The contract business was growing. I wanted to grow contracts. I think S3 should be more contract geared than yeah. permanent. Which is now 80 odd percent? 75 percent, I think. Yeah. Um, and it was, I mean, Russ, obviously Russell had been in a row for a long time. So I was 
Sonil had moved on, so I was a natural successor to Russell. Yeah. And um, yeah, as I said, I'm not sure I wanted it, but then why not? Yeah. And um, yeah, so in 2013. I'm surprised you didn't want it because all of your life, to me, seems like you want to be bigger, better, bigger, better, bigger, better, driven, motivated. You, you know have what it was? to work every step of the way, work hard, but then you didn't want the top job. The top job, I'm a salesman. I love selling. Well, you're selling your company to, to investors, right? No? Yeah, but I know, but I, I, don't, I don't like that aspect of it. Yeah. I love the aspect of, I like the people inter interaction. So yeah. mine's all about people, right? As yeah. I've grown, I had an amazing team around me and I loved that. You go into that role there, you're, you're isolated a little bit from the sales. You're dealing with a lot of the corporate aspects of things, strategy and everything, yeah. which is fine. But I, must, I love the sales element and, and I didn't have to... Russell gave me a lot of freedom to, if I wanted to open up in certain countries or certain, he'll let me do it. Yeah. He dealt with the consequence of, did that drop through into profits? You know, what's the conversion from GP to EBITDA? I didn't worry about that. Yeah. I just said, Russ, we need to keep expanding. Yeah. So I had the best job in the world, really, to some respect, because I didn't have the same accountability. I didn't have to justify it. Yeah. And Russell, someone else was doing that for Someone you. else was doing it. So Russell, and he's really good at it as well, yeah. right? Yeah. So to me, it was... It just wasn't something I wanted to do. What I realised when you do get that CEO title, yeah. people treat you so different. Right, in a good way or a bad yeah, way? Yeah, good way. But it's like, oh, you're a CEO. I was the main board member for yeah, six yeah, years and yeah. no one gave a shit, right? So now you've got a CEO and your title, all these awards come up, you know, uh, Black Businessman of the Year, do you want to yeah. come to this event? Do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? Not many black CEOs, and it's like, whoa, I didn't even think about yeah. it in that way. And it but was how, how much of that was helpful? How much was a distraction? It wasn't a distraction because I wouldn't let it distract me. Okay, no, you were, you were laser focused. I'm still, I'm still pretty grounded, right? I'm not going to get blown away by people blowing smoke up your ass, right? Yeah, yeah. Who cares? So, reluctant CEO, but the business did incredibly well under your kind of tenure there, right? Look, made mistakes, right? Um, learned a lot. You learn on the job. Um, and look, our expansion into contracts, I'm really proud of what we did there because it makes us more resilient as a business. Yep. And our growth in US and Germany. Germany is 30% of our business when I left and the US was 25. So 55% of our business was in really core areas. While the UK was a tougher contracting market, yep. I think the strategy was, was spot on. And I think if you look at the strategy now, four years after leaving, it's exactly the same. Yeah. Contracts, Still working. contracts, America, Germany. Obviously, you've got Asia. I, we set up Japan when I was there. Um, Asia was hit and miss? Yeah, Singapore, Hong Kong, tough. Closed, closed. Yeah. Market size. We was, I opened up in Brazil. Brazil was yielding really well. But by the time you got the FX, by the time you got yeah. taxation, yeah. We could have opened four offices in America, yeah. so we closed Brazil, right? Yeah. Some, so, look, I'm not scared of failing because that yeah. means you're really driving yeah. ambitions. So, but as long as I succeed more than I fail, yeah. which I had done, that's how I look at it. Yeah. You limit your failing by making sure you plan better. Yeah. So what I okay. learned as CEO is like, before we even open anything now, we have a business case, yeah. justification, yeah. and what's it in expense of? How important is the diversification when it comes to riding yeah, the ups and the downs. That's a, that's a good, good, good question, and there's no right answer to this. But I, if anyone knows me, I believe you go niche. Yeah. The risk to go well, niche. Hugs the associates. Is how no, it's even niche than that, right? right. Okay. So if I think about what some of the smaller people that have left us free, they've taken energy. Yeah. And within energy, they've gone niche within energy, or they've gone into IT yeah. and gone niche within IT. Yeah. Right? Now we did that, but they've gone critical mass. So you see some businesses that have gone all in in a particular sector yeah. and been more niche than S3 and end up having 300 people on the market yeah. while we've had five on that same market, right? But then do you not naturally hit a ceiling in terms of your growth potential? If, if, if it's a small market, you hit a point of relative saturation. Depends where you are. In America, yeah. niche is big. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you're right. Some market. But then, but that, then you're doing a, point, right? But then you do an adjacent market, right? Or you do geographical this. expansion. Exactly. Right. I think niche to me, if I, when I ever speak to people, and they might get bored of me saying it, it's um, uh, inch wide, mile deep yep. is, right. is my, is Listen, my approach. exactly our strategy as well, right? So we're, we're going purely into the recruitment and staffing industry agency space. Good luck with that. For that very reason. <laughs> right, listen, 
Yeah. I'm, Selling to recruiters. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm, hard. I'm, I'm well aware we won't go into all of that, but the, the main point is, in my previous job, what I saw companies that we were buying, um, software businesses that we were acquiring in, the ones that had done really well were the ones that went narrow and went deep. Um, didn't get didn't get distracted easily on other things. They might have had to pivot at some point. Of course. But... And that's the kit, you pivot. More moments later. Okay. You ready? Go. Yeah. Ready to rock and roll? So, we're off. We're off. Nice breakfast? Yeah, it was lovely actually. Good. Yeah. Good, good. I can't get nice, used to this nice, tightening. Nice, healthy bre breakfast. It was like Very reminds good. me of my day when I was a vegan. I was a vegan for five years, so, um, yeah. There's a little story, isn't there, about some, <laughs> a certain someone used to own a certain type of car, questions on whether or not it's a genuine Ferrari, we oh, won't go into that. But, oh, don't you go down that route. <laughs> That's what people used to say to me, oh, it's, it's a glorified fear, right? So, so the Ferrari Dino, right, just to, just to frame it in history, yeah. um, Obviously, uh, Enzo Ferrari's son, his nickname was Dino. He was quite a talented engineer before he died, I think, at the tender age of 23, unfortunately. Wow, wow. But he was part of the design team of this V6 engine, which eventually, with Fiat's help, gets a bit more mass produced. Ah, okay. Because Ferrari, to keep driving an F2, had to get to a level where they're producing 500 cars okay. per year. Okay, so, okay. So that's the story behind it. It ends up in this gorgeous looking car, yep. which is a, we'll call it a Ferrari Dino because it is, in a Ferrari Dino. So wh when did you acquire it? I must have had a Dino back in 2002, right. three. Um, it's a blue one actually. And um, it's, I would say, apart from an E-Type Jag, it's one of my favorite looking car i think for beauty shape oh, curves gorgeous. i love it yeah. uh, i say knee type jab jag is my favorite looking car okay well that's that's a drive for another day then, yeah isn't it? i'm looking forward to that yeah <laughs> i'm gonna hold you to that so it's a beautiful car but yeah. not a great drive and um why why not a great drive What's... oh it's, it's noisy i know it's an old car right yeah but, um i had brake problems i nearly crashed once i had to pump the brakes it was right. oh I nearly died in that a few times. Oh, um, it broke down. It wasn't. It wasn't a reliable okay. car, and so I, didn't, I never got any real pleasure out of it. Um, That's a shame. So yeah, it's a shame. Like, if it's a dream car, I know. to then get I it know. and it disappoints you like I that. I know. And um, yeah, so I, I so I didn't get any pleasure out. So I just I I, mean, I sold it, and my timing of selling things is always rubbish, right? Um, but I went to an auction. This is a yes. funny story, and yes. I've not told yeah, this yeah. story to many people, but um, I went to an auction, and a friend took me there and goes, right, we put it in, we, we put a reserve price in there, so unless, if, it hits, if it doesn't hit the reserve price, yeah. then you don't sell it, right? Yeah. So it was, the, all, it was below the reserve price, so I decided to bid on it to yeah. get it to the reserve price. Yeah. But it, wasn't, it, it didn't hit it, so I was thinking, well, I bid, I'm not going to win it. And then the auctioneer goes, sold to the man over there, and I'm thinking, but how can you sell it to me? <laughs> It's, it's not. Car. It's not hit the reserve price. So what I didn't realise, the brokers, yeah, the selling broker decided yeah. to take less commission, right? So it could sell. Oh, so it dropped below. So the, the reserve essentially had had been lowered. No, the reserve because the commission would have been. I don't know. Let's say it's five percent, right? Yeah, I would say. Yeah. It'd only take two and a half percent. That means I'd have got my net money that I'd expected right, anyway. Right. 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 So, uh, I went, so I'm with you now. So I had to go up to the auctioneer and go. Um, excuse me. <laughs> I bought my own car, and there was another bid just b b after me. They went to that other buyer, and he bought it. Oh, um, brilliant! So okay. that's car. So let's say it's a forty grand car. It's worth worth what now? Two hundred? Oh, easy. Yeah, it's north of that. Unfortunately. Yeah, there you go. I, I hate there to you break go. It to you, um, so yeah, it was. Um, and when I got back, and everyone found out that I'd done that, it was just I'm a I was a laughing stock. Yeah. Oh, Gary man. bought his own car at an auction. <laughs> Who does that? The banter in the office. I oh can just imagine. God. So it's a bit like a boat. Then it was like the best. The best day of your life was when you bought it. Yeah. And the best day yeah. of your life was when it, you sold it because of everything kept it going was, wrong. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was. It was. Unfortunately, it wasn't. Yeah. Yeah, so there you go. That's my um, and do you know what classic cars? I had a Carmen Gear. That was a that yeah. was a lovely again. That's a lovely. I, I had a Beetle convertible. Oh, that, that was my car when I was a estate agent, right? right? So I decided to get myself a company car. Yeah. I got myself a, a Beetle convertible. Right. Had it sprayed blue. Yeah. Had a blue new blue roof, white interior put into it. Yeah. Um, 
was taking clients around in it, right? <laughs> so they were loving it. So it gave me, I was a, a differentiator. Well, right? from the station or something? Or? No, as you know, when people come and view houses, I'll take them around in, in my car, right? Okay. And um, so the clutch went on it, yeah. living in Camberwell. Yeah. Um, it was left outside for like three days outside the garage. Someone come and towed it. Yeah. Oh, wow. Just yeah. gone. Wow. Left, gone. I've actually got this desire, I don't know why, I'd love to have another Beetle convertible because I loved it. I loved the look of it. Yeah, they are. Um, if only you lived in California. Though. Yeah, you want the weather as well, don't yeah, you? That's yeah, the problem, that's And my the wife won't, won't have it. She's like, why? It's, they're, they're horrible to drive. The clutch is awkward. and It's a bit she, of history, though. It is history, but she wants luxury. Doesn't want... Yeah. Um, but that's fine. She yeah. can have the, the car with all the bells and whistles. I, I think that if I do get a classic car, if I do, um, it's my, it will definitely be an E-Type. That's what oh, I'd go for. You definitely have to come in mind first. Yeah. It, for me, it's it's a driving experience, right? It's yes, it's a bit history. Uh, yeah, I'm with you. I think it's a gorgeous looking car. It's always been my dream car. Yeah. But that you got a big wooden steering wheel, you know, from St from stunning. 1967. Stunning, stunning. Uh, stunning. No power steering. I know. Stunning. Um, so it needs to be rolling to turn. Yeah, yeah. But you know, you've got a little thing in there that. Uh, it has a little switch on which says map which is basically your sat nav and if you flick it it's actually a little light that comes on because people obviously they used to have physical maps didn't they brilliant, brilliant so but brilliant. the smell the experience yeah, yeah, is exactly. second to none it is it's smooth as anything yeah it's, it's really really beautiful to drive yeah so you know, cars have always been a factor in every part of your, of your journey right so it, different stages right you go through yeah. you know i had a porsche yeah. 911 and then, and then X5. Of course you did. Yeah, of course. How many, how many uh, 911s did you have? Did you have only one. one and I then... actually got it imported from France. It was right. still right-hand drive. I right. paid, I pe the money I paid for it, yeah. I sold it three years later for the same price. Yeah. It was a real, that was a good, that was a good investment. That was a lovely car, 911. Yeah. Um, that's when I first met my current wife. I remember on our first date, I was in East London and I had to meet her in Croydon. Right. And I was late. And I was just, boom, and me like flashing everywhere. Got all the way from East London to Croydon <laughs> with no parking. You're not helping with the applausible deniability, I know, by the way. No speeding tickets. I got through it all. It was like because yeah. you didn't speed. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> just the traffic. Just yeah. it was like Moses in the it, Red it, Sea. It, it just parted. It did. It did. They knew I was late. They knew it was my future wife. So exactly. It's, yeah. It was so meant. It was to all be. meant to be. Yeah. So, so this was part of the chat-up line, was it? The, uh, it the, I, do you know I have a 911? <laughs> and she went, what is that? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so let's take it back to kind of work. Um, so we left off, you were the reluctant CEO yeah. of FTSE 250 company, S3. Yeah. Um, then, then what happened? Obviously, you know, phenomenal success, phenomenal growth. And then you get to a point where you left it in 20... 2019, 2019, just before COVID, actually. Okay. Um, look, I lived in London. My co my girls went to a school in London. Yeah. And the school wasn't. It's not the real. It's, 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 we're not in touch with reality. I think. Right. right. Obviously, very affluent, successful people. Yeah. Nannies and everyone picking up. Yeah. Concrete jungle. Great education. Great school. Yeah. But me and my wife want our kids to do a lot of sports. Yeah. And they play sports maybe once a week. Yeah, yeah. So we felt if we moved out, I wouldn't have to commute. Let's move out of London. A lot of the people I was working with that were people I'd grown the company with had moved had moved on. So I just wanted to, um, so I just needed, and some of the stuff around innovation I was doing, I was excited about it. I, like you say, you know you have an itch with your car? Yeah. I had an itch that I wanted to get involved in, get involved in something else. So yeah. um, I invested in some, some, some companies and Dan Malco also approached me and said, look, yeah. I want to build a CRM. And I'm like, are you crazy, right? It's a competitive market, yeah. blah, blah, blah. He said, look, I'll, let's do some demos and I'll show you how, what the competition have got. And I think, okay. And then this was, I went, okay, let's let's do it. So during COVID, we built um, Higher Genius. On the Salesforce.com. On, on Salesforce. Yeah. But, and I think the reason why we want Salesforce is so that if we want it to scale yeah. and go to enterprise level, yeah. you've got the really solid infrastructure, yeah, right? Yeah, and it yeah. makes life a lot easier, yeah. development costs, etc. But all we looked at the competition and he was right. I wasn't impressed. I think it was very dated. Obviously, Ballhorn were the major player in the market. Right. Um, and that was all, everything plugged in, right? Everything yeah. you built on top. Yeah. And, and the analogy I always used to use, the reason why Hygienist, I think, is effective because it was built for the COVID world. And what I mean by that is remote workers. Yeah. Everyone, the biggest risk to any business is people leave the business mm -hmm. um, and leave with your data because they're all working from their own mobile yeah. phones. They haven't got access from on an app. 
So we built something that, it's like when Tesla came along originally, right? It was an electric car built for that purpose, lovely screens. Yeah. Um, it was just unique, right? Yeah. And we felt Hire Genius could offer that same sort of service to people that want a modern CRM. Yeah. So, so we spent a lot of time building that, um, a couple of years, obviously, it takes longer than you always expect yeah, it to. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so I did, and I also wanted to do some non-exec roles yeah. for privately run companies, not PLCs, where yeah. I can pass on my knowledge to people, right? So I worked with Amora Bond, SJP. Is that where you get the most satisfaction out of, is helping people now? Yeah, do you know what? Yeah. Given where you are in your yeah, kind of... Yeah, do you know what? People leave, S, leave recruitment and try and do other things mm. and end up coming back because that's what you're an expert at, yeah, right? Yeah. So if you, if I'm talking about, you know, I've got some investments in blockchains yeah. and cryptos yeah. and, and stuff like that. But your heart's in but, but I don't, no, I just don't, I'm not an expert, yeah. right? So when I'm contributing on meetings, I can contribute as someone who's run a big business. So I can contribute on people, but I can't contribute on the technology, sure. right? So, but with recruitment, I can talk about recruitment with my eyes closed, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's something that I am generally an expert on. I'm not an expert on blockchain, right? I'm yeah. not an expert on crypto. So to me, it was really about get, passing on that knowledge to people that need it, right? And there's yeah. so many mistakes people make. And, and I think the reason why I love about Hire Genius, we didn't just want to be a CRM platform. Yeah. We actually wanted to be community-led. So we had our first sort of um, uh, group um, catch-up with people who are using customer our platform. Event, right? Yeah, customer yeah. event. Yeah. And it was about giving them recruitment advice. Yeah. And, but we're able, so going forward, we're gonna be able to give advice based on data. Yeah. So we can say, of all our users, yeah. what does a successful recruitment consultant look like yeah. in this modern day? Because yeah. before, you'd look at phone times and yeah. meetings. Especially at the kind of SME level, that has a lot of weight, right? But, but your USP, to me, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, the USP of Hire Genius is that you've got, you've got the whole comms platform included. Well, that's right? what I mean, right? So if you want to take, what does the top recruiter do currently, yeah. right? Yeah. People go, well, people are working from their phones at home. Yeah. So one, how do you track that? Yes. Two, they're sending SMSs and WhatsApp, how yeah. do you track that? Yeah. So our idea is you want to know where, what everyone's doing, where they're doing it, and where it's kept and logged. Now, yeah. if, if it's the company's if you, data. Yeah, so if you've got a, a um, remote number, yeah and it's linked to the platform, yeah. everything's tracked. So when they leave the company, the data stays with you, yeah. not the individual. So yeah, yeah, Brilliant. So we'll include a little link as well to the Hire Genius yeah. uh, website. So yeah. if people are interested, then they can pick up the conversation cool. uh, with Dan. Yeah. So we're back at base. Gary, thank you so much. No it's worries. Been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, it's great. Uh, um, always good could to talk about cars all day long, right? Could talk about cars and, and recruitment. <laughs> I think cars are more interested in recruitment, to be honest. Well, it depends, isn't it? Uh, yeah. One's got to pay the bills and True. got to pay for True. The, the Without the recruitment, you can't have the car, There right? you go. Yeah. So, listen, really appreciate it. I hope it was useful for you guys at home, uh, the viewers, or at work, yeah. uh, maybe during your lunch break. But, um, you know, if you uh, have any questions for Gary, drop us a note uh, and we'll see if we can get them answered. Uh, or just drop a note uh, below in the comments. And as always, feel free to subscribe for, uh, for plenty more of this. Thank you. Thank you.